How's it going folks? It's Jamie here. And today we're going to compare a few guitars. Just got off a meeting, um, had to check in with my band. We're still working on stuff. We're still forming game plans for when we're allowed to actually play. Again, social distancing has been extended through April 30th, if you guys haven't heard, for Michigan anyways. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't really had the time to research it to know how far that spans but as i'm understanding right now all the u.s is it's been extended to till april 30th so let's see here i'm going to test my audio make sure we're all still copacetic has been extended through april 30th. cool yeah we're sounding good and i'm gonna keep this open for the comments we have defcon clark in here um defcon how's it going man um good work on the the page the other day you know what i'm talking about um, but good way to stay di diligent, man. And, uh, thank you for all your hard work. Um, I can't always step up. So that's why we're a team, right? We make things happen when we can and whatever we catch. So, um, yeah, keep it up, man. Hope you're doing well, buddy. And hope your Sunday's, um, treating you very well. Um, I'm going to go over that line six HX stomp, kind of the, um, the wiring glide path that I came out with, um, just the signal path um, I'm gonna take my phone here we're gonna go down we're gonna deep dive and I'm gonna show you live where the cables plug in and how and why uh, it might not be totally clear but I'm gonna try to give you a better understanding of what I'm doing there and how because um, between the input and for the it's the TRS cable right there's one TRS that's required to split between effects loop left and effects loop right in stomp and I need to clarify that I think um, people weren't fully understanding how to utilize both effects loops so I'm gonna make sure that happens let me turn this off here <clears throat> my powered wedge was on so I had to turn that off I have it pole mounted in here so I can play the backing tracks and I'm not tied to these things these in-ears but I've actually been enjoying them quite lately um, I've been using this West Tone, the AM Pro 30s for a while. Um, I got the sponsorship because of my singer and anybody else like the drummer uses in-ears all the time. Um, and it's been a great partnership with West Tone. They make good products. Uh, I have a few of them here. Don't really complain about them at all. Um, I like them over. The only Shures I've used are the SE2115s, just the cheapy ones. And then when I play at some casinos, sometimes they have five driver ones like Hollywood Casino in Toledo, they have five driver units that they'll set you up with and they just have these throwaway um, earplugs, like the the actual part that goes in your ear so it's all sanitary and stuff. But let's see here. Let's see what else we got here. Just DEF CON. Let me share this to my Facebook page. Yeah, like I said, just coming off of a meeting and uh, just really wanted to go live quick. I was already ready earlier today. It just like I wasn't shaved or anything and I had to take a, a shower um, just to be kind of remotely presentable. Hygiene is super important right now. Like it's easy to get lazy with it, but um, <laughs> even myself, man, like I just had to, you know, buckle down and, and focus on. You should probably wash your face before you go to bed. You're right. <laughs> so I did. Um, just been practicing that kind of stuff. Simple stuff that usually didn't uh, pose a problem is now posing a problem. Just be, it, I wouldn't call it laziness. I just think it's like you don't have to, so why do it? But we definitely got a few people in here. We have three. Hope to see some comments here pretty pretty quick. Probably won't. I'm probably going to keep this really short, Short, probably under 30 minutes if possible. Um, it's not going to be an hour and a half long stream. This is going to be a quick thing. Get it done, get it over with, and get back to our lives. But um, yeah, these two guitars here. This is what I really wanted to show you guys tonight. So this is my new one. 
away with you. This is my new one. This is the FR404. This is a Music Yo era. Get a good look at it. It's neck through. Not really a volute there. It's non-existent. The nut mounts from the top, not from the back. But notate the head shop, head shop, headstock shape, um, 24 frets. And it has a Floyd Rose. It is routed for a D-Tuna if you want to use one. But you have a three-way switch. It originally had a tone knob here. But volume, tone, and then a three-way Les Paul style switchcraft switch. But it's a full recessed route back here. So you can pull up all the way. And then this one. Much heavier. This is a much heavier guitar. This is a Kramer Beretta 2 Pro. And 24 frets. Has two humbuckers. The route on this is a little bit different in the fact that it has some wood underneath where the saddles mount. You see that? Alas, you can still pull back. And you can dump the bar. So this one came with a three-way blade switch stock, which I prefer. And then a push-pull coil split on the tone pot. So aside from that, going down to the back, we have pretty much the same kind of setup. It does have a volute. How can I show you that volute? There you go. And it has a rear mount nut with Goto brand tuners on this one. So feel wise, when I compare the necks, let's see if I can do this. The Breda 2 Pro is a little thinner. I don't mind the volute. Just comparing the action. The neck on the Beretta 2 Pro is raised up higher. Means um, the top of the neck, the fretboard, sits away from the body a little bit more. I prefer the neck angle on the FR404, which is the, well, they're about the same price, but um, this would be the cheaper of the two. I prefer this one. Um, the carve is a little bit different for the belly cut, not too different, as well as the width of the upper horn is very similar. So I'd say the volute is the biggest difference. Yeah, neck angle for sure. That's that's pretty much the only thing. So without dinging these up, I'll pick them up for you so you can see them. So as of... It's hard. I'm like kind of looking at myself in a mirror right now. So you can see the horns are very similar. The paint, they're both metallic red. We have some comments here. Aaron Short, what's up, man? How's it going? Uh, Aaron, I got this like last week. Got any calamari. If you get a Variax, you only need one guitar. I'm not getting a Variax, dude. I'm not doing it. I play Kramer's. And I am not selling my amps and guitars. I'm a collector. And I love guitars. And Variax is just, I mean, to me, yeah, it's cool technology, but like, it's the ultimate, like, basic 
It's still basic as fuck. Too many people are doing it. I have my own thing. I Can you see me, like, wearing what I wear on stage with a very X? No. So, yeah. These two. Major difference is the, the detuna cut on this one. As well as the switch position and style. Going on to the back. Both plates are recessed. I'll show you this. Same sort of thickness there. Flip them around. See, it's the same cut and thickness minus the volute on this one here. But aside from that, not really too much of a difference. Chris Link, what's up, buddy? Output jacks, that's a good question. Let's compare those. Position is very similar. Yep. One is black because it came with black hardware and the other is chrome because it came with chrome hardware. Um, so from a technical standpoint, the Beretta 2 Pro, which is supposed to be the, the better version came with an original German Floyd Rose and some other quality parts like I think a Neutrik or whatever. I know it came with Seymour Duncans and Godos. So you have an original Floyd Rose, which these go for like 250 German. It has the German stamp underneath. The push-pull pot, which the other one did have before I removed it. You have the three-way blade switch, which feels like a quality switch. And it came with two Seymour Duncan stock. I think it's a JB and a 59. So how much I go to tuners, you could probably find them for 40 to $60. Um, the rear mount nut is my biggest sell on this because I prefer this. Um, torquing these bolts down in the back really sandwiches this nut down onto the wood, meaning that when you dive and pull back, it doesn't go out. So that's the biggest thing. Um, I wish more companies would incorporate that these days, but I think it might be a cost savings initiative trying to, I don't know if they're trying to cut corners, but they're definitely trying to save costs to get it and to the price range they're, they're trying to shoot for. I understand that, but from a player's perspective and why I signed on for a lot of the guitars I own is because they have features like this and um, it allows me to do what I do without them going out of tune. So there's that. Um, aside from this route here, really not too much of a difference. Um, I'd say they're very comparable. So if you've ever wondered, because somebody asked me, there was a Beretta 2 Pro on eBay for roughly $800 or, or so. Somebody wanted to know what my opinion was on the matter, and I told them that it's a solid guitar for the, the price. Um, I certainly didn't pay that for mine, and mine was mint condition when I got it. My 2 Pro, that is. And this FR404 that I, I received last week was in very good, good condition as well. Had a few dings on the body. But aside from that, there's a trade-off. The FR404 comes with quad rails and the cheap... Kramer bridge, which some people make it work. Um, for me, I've just broken saddles and wore them down over time, but that's why Kramer now has switched over to FRT 1000s at its baseline. And thank you for that. But yeah, you shouldn't be spending that much money on an FR 404 because it has the quad rails 
Um, unless it's been modified and upgraded with an original Floyd and upgraded pickups, I wouldn't spend more than $400 on a Kramer FR404. Um, you can buy them. They have cheap parts on them. They're great guitars. Just put some good parts on them, and it's going to be just a serious, deadly weapon of a guitar. Um, just like this one. This is an FR404. You can see it also has the detuner out, and I gave it the same kind of treatment. This is my number one, if you follow me. And uh, all I really did was put a Seymour Duncan, and this is the Job Tone yellow jacket. I put a YJM, the Ingve Malmsteen Seymour Duncan 500K pot, so it's like really fast. And then a Switchcraft jack, and then the Tessy Switch kill switch hidden there but that's pretty much the only change i made only changes i made to this guitar and here's one last one for you guys so this is the same one as um this one fr404 the one that comes with the cheap parts and this one you can see I tricked it out, put the Job Tones in it. They're pink, they kind of show up red, but Tessy Switch, Kill Switch, Y Jam Pot. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Um, switchcraft Switch. Locking Schaller buttons here. But they all perform very similar across the board and, and sound sound great. They have an awesome weight. They don't have much neck dive at all. Stays in, stays kind of in this position when I'm holding it. So for me, that's perfect. Um, I'm not one of those guys that plays like slash like this, but I get some angle on it. And then sometimes I do the, the back bend. So for me, it's a nice ergon ergonomic style guitar. That does what I need it to do. Um, but like I said, I'm going to keep this short. I just kind of want to go over this diagram quick and show you my signal routing for my pedal board, show you what I'm doing here, and hopefully spread some more information about it. But move my chair back here, and I'm going to do one of these. So here's the diagram. Okay, let's see here. Actually, I want to read some comments first. Um, Chris Link, good evening. Fist bump. Cool Kramers, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Robbie Tim, sup, man? Darren Moore, how's it going, man? Miss your face. Kiss and Kramer guitars. Dang, you got fantastic taste, brother. You know, I like some Kiss. Not a massive Kiss fan. I just had the, the shirt. Wanted to wear it. But yeah, I mean, Kiss isn't bad. We play a few of their songs. I've actually never played a Kramer. I know a guy in a rock band in Michigan that swears by that. Um, yeah, I mean, like anything, Def Con. I love some stuff. And then the other stuff is just like, Nah, not really my style. Like the the SM1 and the Pacer and um, the Night Swan, totally up my alley. The Assault, I got it because I wanted a Les Paul style guitar. The Voyager won't fit in my road case, so I can't have that big star pointy guitar. It's cool, and it's it, there was definitely an era for it and has history, and I'm glad they're still carrying it on. Um, they're great guitars. Darren has one. Darren Moore here in the chat has one. And they're fantastic. But, I mean, if it's not fitting in my guitar vault, it's not coming with me. For shows. So. I play super strats. I'm a super strat guy. But yeah, I'm pushing hard. I'm pushing hard on, on the Gibson team to maybe bring back the Liberty. Um, they're, they actually mentioned that to me, so I didn't really have to push too hard on that. But um, as well as the Pro-X. I want to see the Pro-X make a comeback. 
And when that happens, I'm going to own 10 of them. I'm going to buy 10 of those Pro Xs and just pimp them out. <laughs> um, not like pimp them out to people, but I'm going to like just like trick them out to my liking. <laughs> but. Let's go over this diagram quick before we dive down. So, oh, so my guitar starts at the Line 6 G70, which is on the top right. That's a wireless system, guys. So you could also substitute the wireless for your guitar cable. Like, so your guitar to the drop, to your tuner pedal, to the Morley Wah, and it goes into the HX stomp, the left mono. So if you just use the stomp on its own, that's where you'd plug your guitar cable in. So that should explain that first part of the signal path. Let's not focus on that part. What we should focus on is the, the meat and potatoes of this whole setup and how it works. It's the red lines there. So on the side of the stomp, you have, let me see here. You have a stereo send you have yeah and then you have two returns you have a return left and you have a return right which can also substitute as a an aux so the send comes out of the black where the black and red wires are that's a tip ring sleeve cable so you need a guitar cable that has a shield so your ground and two conductors. Those two conductors are hots. So one of those sends the signal up to the tube screamer. Tube screamer naturally passes that guitar signal to the riot, which is a distortion. Think of it as a preamp. And then back down to the return on the side of the stomp. That's the red line there. So... The other terminal on that red and black connection, kind of by the, the red illuminated foot switch on the stomp, we're looking at that right now. The other signal goes to your amp's input. So these are separate things. You set up two blocks in HX stomp to achieve two, two, basically two effects loops. So effects loop right, which is the red signal, you put that first in your signal chain. Out of the six blocks you're allowed to use, you put that first. So everything, like the wireless, the drop, the tuner, the wah, those are still in front of the tube screamer and the right reloaded distortion. I mean, that's, that's never changing. The, anything with the green line, that's how it is. If you want to add pedals in that signal path, that green signal path, you can do it. It's not going to make a huge difference. Uh, might change your impedance, but the tuner I'm using is the Polytune 3. It's a buffered tuner. But you can make any changes there. You can remove the wah if you don't want to use a wah. You can just have the wireless to the tuner to the HX stomp or just a tuner to the HX stomp. It's, it's however you really want to configure it. So the blue just gets connected to the send input on your amplifier. This is the setup is designed to work for cable method with a physical solid state or a tube amplifier that has an input on the front and then a send and return jack on the back. Um, likewise, the orange line underneath the talk box goes to your amps return. You set this up as a block 
it's going to be effects loop left. So in my application, <laughs> so in my application, hopefully you guys can hear me. Might need to bump my vocals a little bit. Turn up the gain a little bit. There might be a little bit of hiss. But anyways, in my application, what I'm doing here is it's this, to this, to this, which mutes your signal for tuning, to this, and to here. So your left mono in, comes in to your stomp. And then your effects loop right block, which this is my main distorted tone and when I want to use clean, my amp is set to clean by default because this is providing my distortion. This stack here is providing me a distortion in this case. Now you can replace this with a chorus and a phaser and leave your amp dirty and that's what you do. But in this situation, clean. Notice how clean bypasses this block. When I hit dirty, it enables the block. I know it's kind of bright, guys. I might be able to put a filter on here or something. Oh, too bright. Anyways, so you get the gist. Clean bypasses these two. I don't have to sit here and tap on them to turn them on and off. This does the work. Just by bypassing this block removes this distortion from the signal. I'm just using my clean amp. Go to distortion. So I have my time base effects. I have a digital delay and a cave reverb. This volume pedal, which is also tip ring sleeve. It connects here, right next to the guitar input. And you can see that using it provides a full zero to hundred percent linear sweep where if you don't use a tip ring sleeve, what it'll do is go zero to 50 to zero at your heel down. So zero, 50, zero. So that's why it's important when using the Dunlop Volume X Mini, you're using a tip ring sleeve cable from the aux into the expression input. From the Line 6 G50, oh, G50, the G70, what we're doing here is using outputs a and B. A goes to the drop. We know that based on the diagram. B is also your guitar signal coming in and it's just splitting off and I'm splitting it right off into the input here. There's no output. I don't need it. And then from there, sound comes up the hose because this has volume, tone, and gain on board. It does a it does the job itself. Now underneath here, I might be able to show you. Yep. So, <clears throat> got the Zuma. The Zuma's doing the work for us. Um, like I said, we're powering the HX stomp base. It's off of two taps linked together 
for a current double of a thousand milliamps. Stomp runs great, just don't use it in hot situations. If you do, this might act up a little bit and the stomp will be underpowered. Here, I'm gonna kind of reconfigure this a little bit again. Okay, so out of the stomp, this is the TRS cable. So the, one of these inputs is going to your amplifier input, and the other one is going to the first pedal, and that's the effects, the other effects loop. So I just used a tippering sleeve cable. One side terminates to my input, which I just soldered. And the other side terminates to my overdrive. You can see it right here. It's the black cable. I mean, it's the only black wiring on here aside from the power stuff here. So I'm hoping that's a pretty good overview of what I'm doing here. Aside from that, we're just really patching into the side of the stomp and sending those outputs where they have to go. Oh, look at that. It's beer 30. <laughs> So I'm really hoping that that was a pretty good overview. Shows you guys kind of what I'm doing and how. Are you going to freaking go away? There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Let's check out some comments here. How was the Lynch Wah? I love it. Um, it's a great Wah Wah pedal. And um, I think I'm partial to... Um, the Bad Horsey 2, the Steve Vai Bad Horsey 2, but the, the Mini Dragon 2 is incredible. I love it. Um, just different voices, and um, you can set the Mini Dragon 2 Lynchwa has a, a setting where you can basically use a knob to tweak, like halfway would be you stepping on the Wah halfway, but you don't actually have to have your foot on there. So you just hit the foot switch, and it engages the wah and just sets it wherever, like if you turn the, the knob up to like 90%, it's going to be, you know, your foot's going to be further down. It's cool for solos and stuff if you want to like sustain and do all that stuff, but you're going to have that filter on there. So it's a, it's a great wah. I would recommend it to anybody. Byron Job, what's up, man? Um, Job Tone in the house. He just acquired the drop pedal. Very cool pedal. It's awesome um, for you know, drop tuning stuff. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it all the time. It's a pedal that you should use sparingly and only use the OE power supply for that. I fried one myself by using um, a Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus. I have a friend that did the same thing by using a one spot, the nine volt one spot adapter. Um, if you have a good power supply like the Stram and Zuma, you're not gonna have any problems because it's providing the pedal with more than enough output um, to feed it what it needs. So make sure you're looking at the box, checking. I think it needs 350 milliamps. Could be wrong. Let me check here. Needs 300. So only use 300 or more. Not too much though, of course. Striker 100 ST has a great neck. They do, man, and and there were different eras. So, I th I think if you if you have one you really like the neck on, it's probably a guitar I'd love too. But some of them were just like hit or miss back in those days. Chris Link says I saw in, in 1974 I saw Kiss and it changed my life. They took theater, visual effects, and the music over the edge. For me, that's what it's all about, and that's why I love Kiss. Only they're kind of ripoffs in my opinion, but. They're capitalizing on their fans. Um, they can do that. They get away with it. People don't complain too much. Aside from like Eddie Trunk or somebody that knows better and they're trying to tell people like, hey, stop throwing your money 
at this kind of meet and greet stuff, you know, it's not actually his bass guitar you're paying for. You're paying for some cheap stuff made for 200 bucks in China. Um, let's see here. Where's the depth finder in the signal? Well, I'm glad you asked, DEFCON. Let me show you that. So the depth finder is... It's after my Sir Riot and the red cable there, the output, that goes back to the side of the stop. So that's that's where I'm putting it. Um, now you could put that in a few other places, but think of it this way. Basically those two pedals, the, the overdrive and the distortion into the depth finder to add some mojo and then goes into the stop. So hopefully that answered that answers that purple wires coming from the sir. See what else we got here. Byron says, Hank, thanks for the heads up. Um, yeah, dude, I, I would hate to see you fry new gear. <laughs> That's that sucks. Um, Chris, thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I put a lot of thought into this setup, and it, it's been really, really good for me. It's been a workhorse, and um, I'll play it for you guys quick if you want, but I'm going to probably cut this off pretty shortly. not really sure what to play. Let me see here. I think so. I just kind of came, came off a meeting, and I was like, I want to kind of do something tonight, even though it's kind of late. Backing tracks. I might be able to do this one. I haven't played it in forever, but um, worst thing that can happen is I hit the wrong notes, right? And I'm trying to think of what guitar I'm going to use for it. I'll use this one. So many options, so little time. I'll need to put my pedal board back down on the floor. So I'm gonna go silent here for a second, guys. Turn on my amp and do this whole thing.
There we go. <laughs> So that's the power of the Digitech drop. When I when I set my pedal board down, I didn't realize that I turned it on. I knew something was wrong. I was like, this is not right. So it's pretty transparent. <laughs> it fooled me for a little bit. I was like, what's going on? Like this guitar is an E flat, the track's an E flat. Uh, so there's a demonstration of the Digitech drop for you guys. I'm gonna restart. <laughs>
Yeah, so 10 out of 10 forgot how to play that last part. Um, <laughs> but it's all good. <laughs>
All right, guys. So I was just messing around with some different amp channels and stuff, bypassed like a lot of stuff in the stomp. If you use MIDI switching with an amp like I'm using right now, um, you can have it set to recall where your knobs are and stuff, and you can have the perfect tone set up. Like I just had this set up for a clean and I didn't save my other four channels on here. Um, I can set up to pretty much set 127 different tone settings on this amp. Um, however, I currently only have clean saved. So the clean that was set up for the overdrive and the riot, that's what I kind of started with. And the other three channels didn't sound as good. The second one did the crunch channel sounded pretty freaking good in my opinion. And I was liking that for lower gain stuff, but I wasn't really inspired by that at the moment. Um, not really too inspired to play at all right now. Um, but that's why I wanted to keep this brief guys and show you the pedal board, compare the two guitars. That's pretty much it. Um, hopefully you learned something from that. Um, some guy asked me the other day for the diagram and I sent it to him. So if you want it, follow me on Instagram, Prince of Pentatonic, or reach out to me on face Facebook. You can reach me. My name is Jamie. Please don't dox me. Um, <laughs> but thanks for watching and you guys be safe out there guys um we're coming up into week number three week number four for some guys and um got another few weeks ahead of us and i'm hoping it slows down pretty quick because the numbers just rose up to above 100 in michigan because people aren't staying alive like they should um but be safe guys like it's devastating for all of us. Like we were just, I was just on a meeting with my band and we're doing all we can to bring like new mashups and songs and different stuff, but put such a damper on the situation where, where we're, when we're not actually being, we're not able to be in the same room together and work things out. Like who has what harmony? There's a keyboard part here, but we don't have a keyboard keyboard player. What should we do on guitar? instead i mean it just lengthens the entire process from like a like a creative standpoint um we're gonna get through it we're all very active and po positive about it um just gonna take some time but we're thinking maybe may um that we can start hitting the ground running again and playing some shows it's gonna be back to back to back and i'm not gonna have any time but it's gonna be worth it but anyways guys thanks for thanks for tuning in and watching um Hope you're all doing well. Uh, just stay safe out there, guys. I'll, I'll check in with you guys in a few days. Cheers.